there! My name is Hannah Lake. I'm an Alliance Theater teaching artist and I'm here today to teach you a few theater games that you can use in a variety of situations. You can play these theater games in your classroom when your students need a brain break. You can play these games at home with your own children to engage with them in a new way. Or in our current extremely rare case, you can play these games with your students in a virtual classroom. These games are super fun, easy to learn, and will get your students' imaginations fired up. Before we get started, allow me to share a few tips that I've learned from teaching these games myself via Zoom. Number one, you want to encourage your students to find an open space that they can move around in, be whatever they want to be, and have their cameras facing them so that they can see the other students and you as they play. Number two, in terms of sound, you either want to A, have everyone play the game completely silently so that they can hear you, or B, you want everyone to mute their mics, and as you call on them, they will unmute their mic to share their answer. And three, encourage all of your students to have their Zoom in gallery view so that they can see everyone on one screen as they play. The first game we're going to cover today is What Are You Doing? I use this game a lot in my own classes because it covers so many different aspects of our creative brains. Critical thinking, pantomime, movement in our bodies, imagination, so many things. I have three rules for this game I like to introduce. Number one, there are no right or wrong answers. If someone tells you to ride a bicycle, and the way you ride a bicycle is different than how your next door neighbor rides a bicycle, both answers are correct. You can ride a bicycle however you want. Number two, go with it, say yes. If you get a weird what are you doing answer, like my personal favorite, swimming in a pool full of jello, you don't want to just say no, you wanna be brave, say yes, and show us what you think swimming in a pool full of jello looks like. And number three, make specific, strong choices. Be really detailed with your pantomime. If your next door neighbor tells you to make a peanut butter sandwich, let's see you get the bread down. Get the peanut butter down. Unscrew the lid. Open the bag of bread. And from there on out, be really specific with your choices. This game is usually played in a circle, going around the circle one at a time. The teacher or whoever the leader is will choose a thing that they can begin doing a pantomime, such as brushing your hair. It can be anything. It can be simple, it can be real, it can be something made up, but we'll just start with brushing my hair. So you want to start this action and do it for a good chunk of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, and then the next person beside you, to your right, to your left, whichever direction you want to go, will say to you, what are you doing? The person who is brushing their hair will respond with something completely different. For example, I'm riding a motorcycle. The person who is brushing their hair will stop their action, and the person whose turn is next will begin riding a motorcycle. Grabbing the handlebars, vroom, vroom. You can play with sound effects or silently, and then you'll continue going around the circle in that way, and then it'll look a little something like this. Hey, Miss Hannah, what are you doing? I'm riding a motorcycle. What are you doing? I am jumping rope. You can keep this game going as long as you want, as many rounds as you want. When playing this game virtually, you as the teacher are always the one asking, what are you doing? Because you're not able to play in a circle. Instead, you'll say, hey, insert student names here. What are you doing? That student will answer and then the entire class does the action together. This has also helped me in person in classrooms when students are shy or have trouble of thinking of things on the fly or when other students in the circle are losing interest. Try it for yourselves and get creative. How was what are you doing? Fun, right? Up next we're going to play a game called this is not a dot dot dot. This game is especially great for virtual learning because you can use ordinary objects around your house. The person who starts this game will use an object such as a pen. They will say, this is not a pen, this is a, and then they will insert another object into the sentence that this pen could be, such as 
a magic wand or a broom. The idea is to create as many different objects as you can that this pen could also be. So let's try a few rounds out and see what happens. This is not a pen. This is a mustache. This is not a pen. This is a bug antenna. This is not a pen. This is a shovel. Once you feel you've exhausted the pen, feel free to try out another object. Let's try a, a bowl. How many other objects can we make with a bowl? Let's try it out. This is not a bowl. This is a hat. This is not a bowl. This is a piece of armor. This is not a bowl. This is a drum. How did that game go for everyone? Great. This is an awesome game for virtual learning to get your students thinking outside of the box. Try assigning an object in advance as a scavenger hunt homework assignment, and then they'll already have the objects ready to go at the top of your class. Try it out and have some fun. For our final game, we will play The Children Are Sleeping. This game is great for movement and for listening skills. You'll start the game beginning saying, the children are sleeping, as your students find a comfortable, sleepy position on the floor. I like to insert some heavy snoring sounds here to get them giggling and comfortable while they get into their comfortable positions. And then you'll say, but when they wake up, they become and you'll insert something for them to become upon waking. It can be anything you want, but I like to do a good mixture of animals or inanimate objects varying in size and speed. So as we begin, you might say a bulldozer, then a bubble, then a tiny kitten. Make yourself a list of things in advance if you think that would be helpful for you. This is true for all games, but especially this one. You playing alongside of the students, up and down, snoring, being silly, it's only going to encourage them to have more fun, and you will definitely have more fun too. Let's try a few rounds now. The children are sleeping. But when they wake up, they become a spider. But when they wake up, they become a train. The children are sleeping. But when they wake up, they become a sloth. How did it go? Hooray! The possibilities with this game are endless. You can also connect it to any content area of your curriculum. For example, if you're reading a book together with your class, perhaps you could have them become an animal or another person from the book you're reading. Or you could have them act out moments in history, such as signing the Declaration of Independence. Or they could become a plant or an animal from a specific ecosystem that you are studying. A few tips on playing this game. I always like to tell my students, let's keep our volume between a zero and a one for the entirety of this game. Or you might just tell them to play the game completely silently. It can get pretty loud. Also, if you're playing this game with a co-teacher in the room or perhaps a parent on a virtual session, you may wanna include them in the game and say, hi, parent, what do you think our students should be when they wake up? So there's a few games to get both your virtual and your regular classrooms flowing with energy, imagination, and lots of laughs. 
I hope these games bring lots of joy to your time with your students. Happy playing!